Dr. Masakazu Aono is one of the world's leading nanomaterial scientists. A few years ago, Dr. Aono was studying electrical circuits. Then by accident, he observed an interesting phenomenon. While trying to build a metallic nanostructure, Dr. Aono noticed that silver was attaching itself to the platinum probe. He had placed silver sulfide and platinum one nanometer apart. When he applied voltage, the silver atom started to grow. Under certain conditions, the silver atom just keeps growing. And when you change polarities of the voltage from plus to minus, the silver begins to shrink. When we saw these results, I immediately thought this can be used as the first atom-sized switch that would operate at room temperature. It was a discovery that became the basis of the design of the world's smallest atom switch. The distance between the two electrodes is one nanometer. As electric current flows, individual atoms leap out, acting as a switch. So we achieve the switching motion by moving and controlling just a few atoms. The computer is an amassing of countless on-off switches like that and it calculates and memorizes through individual switches going on, off, on, off. So, basically, it makes it possible for us to make it very small. Dr. Aono found another interesting characteristic of the atom switch. As power is increased, the switch maintains its on position despite being shut off. It's similar to how personal computers are able to reboot very quickly after being shut down. It was a discovery that ushered in another phase in computer evolution. When UCLA's professor Jim Jimjeski heard about the atom switch, he decided to visit Japan. His idea was to use the atom switch in a neuromorphic computer, one that could potentially mimic the human brain. Hey. Hi. Hi, Jim. It's ah. yeah. Spatially. The research is a collaboration between Dr. Aono's lab in Japan and Professor Jimjewski's lab in California. And their long-term goal is to build artificial neural systems. The human brain is made up of a hundred billion nerve cells called neurons. Neurons transmit electrochemical signals to each other and to the rest of the body. The signals are conveyed at intersections where two neurons come close together in a junction called a synapse. Professor Jinjeski believes that this interaction parallels what happens in the atom switch. And when I saw it, I started to think, we can use this in a different way. We can use this in a way where these elements are like what you call synapses. These are things, you know, inside the neurons that trigger information. And I started to see these devices are behaving like neurons. So how could we wire them together? And when I thought, how do we wire them together? I looked at the structure of the brain. And when you look at the neurons, you know, they're interconnected, kind of tangled messes. I thought, well, let's make the wires that way. And, and, and sort of mimic the brain. Professor Jim Jeski was convinced that he could structure the silver and sulfur atoms in a computer, creating a structure that mimicked the brain's complex system. In his research lab in Los Angeles, work was soon underway to build the brain circuit.
The first step was to recreate the structure of the neurons in the brain. If Jim Jeske could achieve that, the system would theoretically function like the brain. If you watch the brain circuit assemble, you'll see that embedded in this complex pattern are billions of atom switches. Professor Jim Jeske then applied a current to the circuit and witnessed the circuit changing its configuration. The circuit links where current flowed became stronger and thicker, allowing for more current to flow. But beyond that, the artificial circuit also showed signs of a phenomenon that mimicked memory. It doesn't have any real knowledge. And then as it experiences things, it starts to develop connections, and then it has an experience. And from this past experience, then it can predict, let's say, future experiences. And that is um, a process of, let's say, learning and developing. OK. So when we look through this data... Professor Jim Jeffsky's team was applying a constant current to the brain circuit when the current suddenly soared to an unexpected level. What was going on? What was the cause? The team began a collaboration with scientists at the university in Mallorca, Spain. Jim Jeske has been working with Argentinian brain scientist Professor Dante Chialvo. Chialvo has been studying brain patterns and has been measuring the electrical currents transmitted through the brain when we experience emotions. In the human brain, when we think of something especially evocative or are overcome with emotions, there's a sudden flood of signals. Professor Kielvo was amazed at the similarities between the artificial brain circuit and the human brain. And the basic mechanism of the human brain and the basic dynamics of these atomics, which is exactly the same, and it's not just a metaphor, because the physics that, that rules this collective process is universal. Research into the brain-computer circuit is still preliminary, but Professor Jim Jeske aims one day to develop an alternate intelligence. The current goal is for this um, system to be able to learn things, and it could learn, you know, what you like. It could learn your habits. When you grew up, you would have coffee there. It could be your friend, yeah, because their experience would be your experience. So if you're with them constantly, they would become understanding of you. 